Welcome back to the Telosive <laughs> EV podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I apologize for the audio last week. It was entirely my fault. Um, no, no, no. I, I'll, ta- I'll take blame. I'm sorry. Mike, that Mike wasn't here I messed last up week. the audio. Yeah. It was my fault. I, I did all that. And I, I sincerely hope that you can forgive me from the bottom of everyone's hearts. Uh, bottom of everyone's hearts. I, don't, I, don't I know have Dirty Tesla my never forgave us it's, for that. It's just bottomless. It's bottomless. We'll, we'll never have like Chris on again. Like the fries at uh, Red Robin. He hated, he hated us after that recording. But um, <laughs> we had an earnings report in mm. the past week since the last recording. <laughs> Yay! I guess so, I was. Yeah. Ho- uh, I know Mike was really excited to kind of recap most of that call and just kind of explain everything that went down. Oh, definitely. All the Good, energy storage I, lingo. I most definitely watched every single frame of that earnings call and most definitely haven't heard anything about it at the moment so do you like no. lectures the nick is I love it was lectures. all lecture mm. ah. it was nothing but a lecture okay elon went into extensive detail on why well i mean i liked the overall thesis of it which was essentially we don't need a breakthrough in battery chemistry which seems to be a very common Mm-hmm. Uh, assumption in a lot of the EV world is well, I just gotta get this solid state. We gotta get this solid state. Oh no, we gotta get these graphene batteries. This is gonna change everything. And you can charge. It's like, yeah, that's all great. Make a trillion of them, and then we'll talk. <laughs> if you can make one or two, no one really cares. It doesn't really make a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I shouldn't say no one cares. Probably some investors <laughs> care. Like, I'll buy into this. It's gonna be big in ten years. But um, if you're not mass producing them at insane scale by the terawatt hour it's not really going to be able to cause any difference so i was glad to see elon kind of put his foot down on that and be like there's nothing wrong with the batteries it's a matter of how many batteries can we make (laughs) it's that's Mm -hmm. the challenge it's not like well what lithium is old i've heard lithium for so long when are we going to get a new hype term you know antium batteries like Vibranium batteries. There you go. That's going to change everything. Unobtainium. Right, Mike? Adamantium. Unobtainium. It's adamantium. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing Talos' we need, movie review in here now. With, we uh, need some the type of speak. fancy new battery chemistry, and that will suddenly change everything. But no, they're just like, no, you got to make a bunch of these things. And with current battery tech, we can transition the whole fleet to electric, and we can transition houses to battery powered like if if just a giant box full of batteries fell from the sky in that a safe hurt. way <laughs> that'd be very fiery and explosive make sure it very lands fiery. right on top of the cyber truck because we know the cyber truck's like, indestructible windows will handle the load <laughs> indestructible. it they won't go shatter, through but they might it there won't go, go through it won't exactly. go through so it was it was good things he was talking about, but I agree they did kind of go on. There was like three questions basically in the whole earnings call. <laughs> it was like yeah, around there. It was maybe one or two from the uh, shareholders or those who could submit questions on the, I guess, basic level. And then there's the industrial yes. questions as well that I think they covered all of them because there's only three of them, mm. or most of them at mm-hmm. least. And they weren't as bad and this time as in the past. No, they weren't unbearable. They've- they they weren't great or terrible. Um, I I guess there's still that one guy that's just like, when's the van coming? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Thankfully, you like, just like no comment. <laughs> uh, we're we'll we'll tell you when we have something. <laughs> that was about it. But I just I hate it when the people expect them to do like giant product announcements in the middle of an earnings yeah. call and just be like, tell find, us the exact specifications. I find, I find that really funny in any earnings call, especially like Apple or yes. Tesla or whatever these big companies where someone's like, you know what? If I ask nice enough, they might leak their <laughs> big product reveal. They might <laughs> leak <the> product. <laughs> How much will the iPhone 13 cost, Tim? Oh, great Just question. Like, Thank you so much for asking. We're actually going to be raising the price $200 this come <laughs> September. It's like, no, that's not how yeah. that works. My question, top question, if I was on the earnings Ooh. call that I would still ask to this day, is how they are going to mass produce 4680 model wise from Texas and 2170 model wise from Fremont simultaneously. Yes. Like, what's their rollout plan yeah. for that? That's on the top of my list of good enough question that no one really knows the answer and also not really revealing or leaking anything. It's just mm-hmm. like, hey, you've said Model Ys are coming out of this factory later this year. I believe you. But are they going to be Show substantially different? 
from the Fremont model wise? And does that mean you shut down Fremont model wise or do you coexist? How do you have both of them at the same time? Um, that's something I would love some clarification on that they haven't provided any, but also just a billion Cybertruck questions. <laughs> you got, what, what would be your, what would your be your guys' earnings call question if you got the chance to ask? Is one? this a normal earnings call question or a lecture question? Because I feel like I'd ask different questions. If I could have Elon lecture me about, I'd say either lecture me on something for about thirty either. minutes, I'd probably pick something other than when can I have my Cybertruck, Elon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd mine, be a terrible question. Mine would be. <laughs> When are you going to announce the supercharging partners um, for all these oh. other OEMs that are coming to the market, right? Like Aptera. I like the phrasing. Or but instead of Bollinger, why, maybe. Or, uh, when? Why? why? Why aren't there any? Well, it's different because Mike didn't say, what are the partners? He said, when are you going to announce the partners, mm. which I appreciate. That's different <laughs> because which, that there's would be simp- like a big reveal. Yeah. There's a simple answer of, eh. In the next few months or whatever, kind of like FSD. Uh, sure. But if... Major rewrite uh, happening next month. Oh. <laughs> we catch them on a good Not day. It's one. like, oh, we've been thinking about it. And we have a substantial list of partners that we've been talking to. And we'll be talking about that maybe summer or mm. quarter three. Later this year. Yeah. Later this year. Later, Later this, year. this year. Just keep on going and going and going. That's <laughs> How about you, Nick? It can be either or. A quick answer, yeah, a lecture answer, I, whichever I, you prefer. I would be pretty uh, I'd be pretty interested in listening to Elon talk about uh, the design of the Cybertruck. Uh, not just, uh, you know, the, the pretty look of it, which, you know, I think that's the joke. But the, the actual question would be, like, manufacturing and, like, how are you planning on folding the steel? Like, like tell, me, tell me how that works. And, and mm. why exactly is this better? Because a single cast back model y or model three is still probably going to be easier to just cast than you know folding in an origami fashion right like why is this better now i'm sold on it Mm -hmm. but i i I want to know why and why they think that i want to know the why behind that being the better decision because i've heard the why uh, (laughs) the why i've heard uh, i've I've had i've heard sandy monroe i said randy sinro and i got i got that all mixed up (laughs) Um, (laughs) Who, uh, yeah, so he's, he's talked about that a little bit, like, you know, why the Cybertruck's going to be amazing. But I'd love to hear it from Elon's mouth, and they'll probably be some pretty similar answers. But um, just the that design consideration, when they're sitting down to do this ty- Cybertruck, why were they like, folded steel is going to be better? I believe it is. I just want to know why. I, I think that'd be a good question. You don't want to ask something that they would rather save for an event, you know? Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's uh, what I think is so stupid when people are like, When's the van? What's the van going to look like? What's the range of the van? Do you have a picture of the van you can just show us on this telephone call? (laughs) Can you tweet the van prototype now? (laughs) Like, when they want to have a van event, they'll have a van event. You got to ask, like, precise questions that make the whole boardroom around the phone go, I guess we could talk about that. You know, like, that's... (laughs) The Mm -hmm. other one I was thinking of is, like, what are you having in replacement of door handles? Because I don't Mm -hmm. know if they're going to have a whole updated event just for the Cybertruck, or if they're just going to post a photo of one one day and be like, oh, that's the new one. Like, I'm not sure event. what... I think it'll you be think on it'll the be a whole second No, I, it'll, it'll be on a website. I don't think it'll be... Oh, okay. It'll really? be a very much like Apple putting AirPods Pro or whatever on the website. Good job. <laughs> Did I say that right? Is it Pro you or is remembered. it Max? I don't not, know. Not AirTags <laughs> Pro. Those are coming Both. next year. Uh, Pro and Max were site refreshes. But yeah, similar to the Model S and X refresh, that was just a shareholder deck announcement. Mm-hmm. Like, um, that was we had no clue. That was on the site before. Yeah, that's true. There was no event, and then just the shareholder deck went live before the Q4 mm-hmm. earnings report, and there was just pictures of the updated interior, and everyone was like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, well, okay, that's it. Okay, we're looking at it. There's the refresh, and the pictures were going everywhere. I remember my jaw dropped because I thought it was a concept. Oh. When I first saw that photo, it was of the Model S with the yoke and the 17-inch Ooh. landscape. Mm-hmm. I saw the picture, and I was like, oh, that's a really good concept. <laughs> I was like, that's really intricate and detailed. And, and then I read the title, and it was like, updated Model S just announced. And I was like, no way. That's real? Then I go to the shareholder deck, and I was like, oh, my God. That's actually <laughs> what it looks like. They did everything I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted. Ultron. Thank you. But... Cybertruck door handles, you could be like, so are you going with a slide feature on the 
on the column or a door button like or like Chris said, are you just gonna kick the whole door and the <laughs> springs open? Well, I don't hate that idea. I what does like Elon it. Musk like about Ford? What the Maki? I guess I so. Know. Electrifying the truck. <laughs> <laughs> what does he like about Ford? I feel like there's not much. Do you know, or are you? No, just asking I know. Me? This would be another question. Is this a to joke? Ask him. Like, you know. <laughs> well, okay. Like, I, he can. I remember there being a congratulation tweet when they announced the Mach E back yeah. in 2019. He yeah. was like, "Thank you, Ford. That's great. You know, keep doing that." Uh-huh. Meanwhile, the Ford CEO is like, "You know, Teslas drive themselves with no driver, according to Consumer Reports." Yeah. Just, uh, Thanks, Ford. Kill people. You're doing great. Keep it going. Oh, well. <laughs> Why are you against the, the door is the button idea, Mike? A I want to argue. springy door? Uh, I don't know. It's selectively springy. Selectively springy. It's got active dampening, so that way when the phone is nearby, it isn't as... Or it's more springy, I guess. You can press it in. Essentially, it's flush when it's locked or unlocked but when it's unlocked you can push inward on the door and it, it's just like the model x button except the button is now the entire door instead of just a selection of the door i feel like you're adding complexity to a door panel and it's easier just to install a button on the b pillar or a hex hexagonal one or a finger swap or swap slide so finger swap finger swap it swaps your finger um, I don't what, know about the the slide feels too like what's the term bougie oh. bougie yeah no. that's it bougie it feels very fancy like you walk up to the roadster and you're just like open <laughs> that makes sense for the <laughs> roadster it opens up no the, with the cyber X truck is the you, I imagine walking up to the cyber truck with your work gloves on and you're all dirty and you you're go up like, to it and you're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah I imagine just like slamming the door and it pops open like or or shouldering it or kicking it or just it pops itself you have muddy open hands. and then it, you don't want to you know muddy. not like I've ever yeah. had muddy hands before but so you kick the door with your boot <laughs> which is also it muddy. looks better with mud yeah oh, definitely. definitely what would like be if this is steel that can take a beating let's take advantage of the fact that this design could take a beating you know i guess my question is what's the alternative if you don't have your phone and all you have is the key card is it still the B pillar? Uh, yeah, it probably you just scan it there and then push it. Hmm. It's the same as a same as a three or Y. You yeah. can still try to open a door even if it's locked. You know the the little handle will still twist. Yeah, it just won't do anything. Same with the door. You could push on it, it won't do anything. Hold the card, it makes a little sound. It could do a little. Yeah. Boop, boop. I just see like too a, much complexity being like added a to the door panel. Sound? Oh my goodness. It's a backup sound. <laughs> you really want to get on this backup sound that recently came out from Giga Texas. I didn't hear the sound. I just saw the video. Yeah, I saw Does the video as well. Mm-hmm. Is it different from Model Y and 3 pedestrian speakers? Hmm. You're live, Nick. Did they lose me? <laughs> no, I haven't heard the sound either. I'm just excited that someone heard it. What does it sound like? Oh, someone heard it. Oh, I well, I mean, it. I've seen it back up, and the lights look interesting on the bottom. I didn't know it had two very bright LEDs in between the tailgate and the lower bumper. Yeah. Oh. I thought that was cool. Huh. Um, but yeah. otherwise, I don't know. <laughs> My wife saw it, and she's just like, I still don't like the back of that thing. Like, she loves the front. She <laughs> loves the side profile. But the back, she's like, this thing is like a wall. <laughs> I'm like, that's what you want. If someone crashes into you, they're crashing into a wall. I mean, how often are you going to see the back of your pickup? I don't see the back of my Y much, so I I don't think you should have a problem with it. How much do you see the back of an iMac? Fairly frequently. (laughs) (laughs) Especially where Mike's going to set his up. I see what your wife is saying, though, to be fair. When I see the truck from behind, it looks like a... What's the term? Parallelogram? looks like a trapezoid, yeah, yeah, trapezoid block. Mm. It looks like a big brick, and I'm just like, eh, you know. That's okay, though. I'm not going to see it from the back. There's not a lot of cars, I think, look great from the back anyway. The no. Ses- I'm looking at my Tesla Semi from the back. I'm like, eh. You're I not mean, meant to look at it that way. <laughs> You're not meant to look at it that well, way. Well, some cars are. The, the Tesla 2042 Roadster the back design. is going to look really good in the back because that's the only part of the car you'll ever yeah. see. You'll only see the back. <laughs> There's a lot of striking okay. similarities between the Roadster and the Mazda Miata. 
And mm. I think that's mainly just really? because Franz came from Mazda. Mazda. Mm-hmm. And he mm. kind of still probably has some of that design language ingrained in him. But the front lights look very similar to me in kind of the shape of the front of the vehicle. is a little bit yeah. Miata in my opinion. Mm. But I don't know. It does have that look. Definitely take up a picture of that if you're listening to this right now. Definitely take up a picture of the Roadster and the Miata. Totally different price brackets. Totally mm. different performances. Different audiences and everything. But the design language is a bit similar. Oh, I see it. I'm looking at it right now. Kind of reminds me of the original Roadster. Mm. So that was a Lotus. Very heavily modified Lotus. Heavily modified. 92% of the parts were not the same part. <laughs> <laughs> not the same. Not the very same. Very different. They're very different. Completely different. Big <laughs> different. Yes. <laughs> oh, nice. Did that really happen? Anyway. In 2030, when the Roadster comes out, it's going to be a very different <laughs> world. <laughs> the, <laughs> um, I hope not. I... I really enjoyed doing a video just speculating on what type of EV market we'll have by 2030. I was curious what types of things you guys could imagine within the next nine years or ten, depending on how you look at it. Um, Nicola, yeah, I don't count I, Nicola, Nicola everywhere. <laughs> Nicola everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. many hydrogen trucks all over the place. Like, Nicola trays left and right. <laughs> what do you think the world, the EV market, will be like by then? Micronet. I'll defer it to Nick first. Oh, I'll okay, think cool. about it. Okay. All right. Um, what I think the EV world will look like, um, I think first off, none of us will exist because the asteroid in, that will impact the Earth in 2024 <laughs> will vaporize right. all of us. But yes. if, ass, assuming we don't live in that future and there's some alternate reality, um, I would imagine uh, we'll, t- Tesla will definitely be dominant. I, I, I think at this point, I was talking about this with my grandpa the other day, Grampy, the other day. Um, talking about full self-driving and the supercharging network and i was kind of like at this point i don't think tesla can lose like they've kind of set themselves up in a position either. similar to what marquez was talking about apple and AirTags. like they, they can't lose in this situation they have a huge market share of a hugely booming and growing uh market a they kind of created mm-hmm. the market they made the market fun um governments all across the world and lots of people celebrities they're all saying this is the future right I, I don't see many global governments saying, yeah, let's go invest $10 trillion in gas cars. No one's saying that. And so <laughs> Tesla's kind of in the right place at the right time, and they have the scale ready yeah. to go. So in 10 years, I expect to see Tesla 10 times bigger. I think uh, I think Tesla will have uh, probably the largest market cap in the world because not only are they going to be giving everyone electric cars, they're going to be doing power walls. They're going to be doing solar panels. They're going to be doing solar roofs. They're going to be doing commercial uh, battery pack installations. They're going to be the energy company. Um, and mm. I think if there's any company that exists today that has the potential to hit the B&L status of global mega corporation, it is Tesla. Yeah. Mark my words. Mm-hmm. The man telling the axiom in uh, in the president of by and large, Telling the axiom to stay in space and Wally is actually Elon Musk from the future, because that's that's how time travel works. I think. Um, so I think Tesla's going to get bigger. <laughs> um, I don't think any of the other manufacturers are really going to be able to keep up. They'll try, and then they'll eventually probably be propped up by more government funds because that's what happened in 2008 when all the automakers were like, "No one's buying cars." Instead of going out of business like most companies, <laughs> they stayed alive, but uh-huh. they didn't pivot their business in any way, which is the problem. They didn't learn from their mistake in 2008 of, of creating more I efficient. think GM did. I think compared to Who? Ford, right? Who? GM, General GM? Motors. I yeah. mean, okay, sure. They broke up a lot of the, uh, they de- the unions de- that they had. Okay, mm. interesting. So I think they well, set they them up pivot to electric or vehicles, set themselves is up. my point. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Very true, uh, and they ended up p- pivot away from the dealer model. I think the dealer model and not being EV is what what's going to be holding these big companies back. And I don't see any of them majorly pivoting away from that. They're all going to make their platitudes towards the EV. Every company probably in the next five years is going to have at least a few EVs, but they're going to be the sucky ones. They're, I think Maki is the first good non-Tesla EV that I've seen um, <laughs> that's available for purchase, and I don't specifically love it, but it's it's good. Um, and so anyway, well, hold yeah. on, Nick. The Bolt okay. EV <laughs> the Bolt got EV the best the car, Bolt. 
Got the yeah, best from car City or electric from car of the year. Consumer award. Reports. Or whatever yeah, it is. From, yeah, Consumer Reports can go show it where the sun don't shine. Because <laughs> Teslas don't kill people. On t- <laughs> that's not. Oh, I mean, the Model Y got the best luxury EV of the year. Well, in that case, Consumer Reports is amazing, and we should listen to every single <laughs> <laughs> Which I think it definitely Exomark? deserved. <laughs> the I think, yeah, I think from government bailouts, uh, a lot of older auto companies will survive, mm-hmm. but not d- uh, dominate as much yep. as Tesla does. I, I do s- certainly think there's going to be some casualties, though. I'm mm-hmm. not sure who yet. Toyota's high on my list just because of how slow they are to Please. this electric Please transition. Get rid of they Toyota. just recently me. announced, like, like we're going to have 15 EVs by 2025, but they have, like, almost none now. Mm-hmm. Um, There'll be 15 variants of the Toyota Priz EV. <laughs> <laughs> like different trims. It, you'd think the Prius would be the easy transition point, right? Like totally. it's got and, almost and all of like the. It's, just take the gas part out. Yeah, <laughs> just do a VW move. Take out the gas yeah. part, put in the electric. It's got poor range, uh-huh. but it still looks like something people would buy. It's something. Do it. Yeah, I, I feel like there will be some casualties. There's the the reason in my video I didn't bring up Rivian and Lucid very much was because I am still unsure of who will own them in the long term mm. like depending on how profitable they can make cars i could easily see amazon taking over rivian and deciding they want full ownership which i don't want to happen i could just see it happening or apple taking over lucid and either dissolving them into their own apple brand or keeping them set like i don't know so that's why i kind of was hesitant to talk about the startups because they can go in so many different directions but tesla i think you're right nick has position themselves into a place of unless Elon just ditched the whole company and I there mean, were some people planet? in charge making really 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 bad decisions yeah, or the planet if if Tesla just had some really bad leadership go on which I don't think will happen mm-hmm. but for the most part they've positioned themselves into a place where they can't lose and especially just from their battery like they don't have to have the most desirable car they don't have to have the best range even if if they can build more than anybody else it won't really matter who's has the better interior quality who has the cheaper starting price if it if it just comes down to we make more than anybody else then they're going to dominate so and that appears to be the biggest bottleneck with ev adoption is the supply chains not the demand there's people buying those bmw i3s all the time and i think they look god ugly but people like them i've seen a whole bunch of them in the bay recently like left and right, a whole bunch of i3s. I'm like, why are people buying a whole bunch of i3s right now? I guess maybe the just range because... isn't even that good. They the... look really cheap on the like 2018 or so. I was looking at some used i3s and they're like less than twenty thousand dollars. And I was like, mm. hmm. And they had like pretty low mileage. And anyway, I don't know. I I, I seriously considered a, an i3 for a little while. Um, now I think I well, did cheap. with the Cybertruck, but I guess it, at one point I was kind of like, good, I wonder why these are so like undervalued. Mm. I, I don't understand that design. My wife calls it the modern house on wheels <laughs> because that's, it looks so. It. It's got like a big wood. Like, I guess yeah, Tesla's got the big wooden panel on it. Hi again, Drew. Welcome I'm back. back. Drew um, Starlinked. <laughs> we're talking about how my wife calls the i3 a modern house on wheels with just how mm. again. The word that I like to use is bougie. It's a very mm. bougie, bougie interior with mm-hmm. all the weird knickknacks that's gone there as well. The, the weird yeah. gear selector, it strange. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, simulates like a turnkey. But mm. yeah, I guess to answer your question, Drew, in terms of the mm-hmm. future, uh, here in the Bay, at least before the pandemic, I, at least before I lived here in the hills, um, I lived in the city, and mm-hmm. what was pretty cool is there's a whole bunch of, uh, what's it called? Not delivery trucks, uh, kind of Kogi trucks, type of Meals on Wheels type of things. Oh, um, yeah. Totally forget what the specific name food is. Food truck? Food yeah, truck, food I truck. guess, is a better way to go with it. Um, but I see that market growing <laughs> more and more, me. and <sighs> there's a lot of uh, support around it. There's... I think our generation's more accepting of meals on wheels and food trucks kind of going around and they mm-hmm. usually don't really need too much, right? You kind of just drive it mm-hmm. to one location, you park it, yeah. you unfold everything, and then you start making the food. And if there's an abundance yeah. of either 
charging stations or just charging spots, I can see a huge market for stuff kind of like what Canoe makes with the MP and multi-purpose delivery vehicle, I guess. MPPV. <laughs> MPDV. Um, stuff yeah. like that. I can see all over the place in huge areas kind of like the Silicon Valley or Austin or Detroit mm. or New York. Um, stuff like that. I can definitely see a future in regards to EV food trucks being able to mm. serve people food and you can get on a pretty good like the upfront cost kind of sucks with mm. buying electric vehicles but the long term the operational cost is nil which i think would yeah. very much appeal to that demographic of people who want to have something that's easy to service and focus more on the business rather than focus on the vehicle that the business is riding on quite literally <laughs> mm. um, but yeah stuff like that I, and yeah more cheaper evs um, is mm -hmm. inevitable for sure i think the upfront cost of electric will be pretty close to gas by that year personally even with vans and stuff i think that if you think about how much has changed like the model 3 has not been on the market for five years mm. like yeah the unveiling kind of funny. Yeah. was five years ago yeah. um and think of how much the EV market has changed totally. since just five years ago. And now imagine nine years from now, I'm imagining like whole new waves of EVs getting cheaper, cheaper battery scaling production to the point of buying something with a combustion engine just makes such little sense because electric will get decent enough range and still be cheap enough to even up front be a, a worthy contender for the vans and for semi trucks too, I, I could see those taking off a lot. I think the the semi truck frequency of all electric will be one of the most differentiating views of roads today versus roads in 2030. Like mainly because they they get used so much, they're like all over the place. Whether you're in a rural place or a populated place, there's semi trucks everywhere, and they're all noisy and loud, and they all have these big exhaust pipes that are pumping out stuff constantly. And they're all used for commercial purposes, pretty much. Mm -hmm. They're all used for moving stuff and getting places where they need to be. And once they start ramping Tesla semis, and hopefully a few other brands are ramping their Class 8 all-electric trucks with good range and reasonable prices, all of that upfront cost to the businesses that pay for semi-trucks is just going to become abundantly worth it. I could see that happening within the next five years just the point of pretty much anybody who's into the heavy duty trucking is just like why aren't we using these things yet <laughs> like as the mega charger network gets built out as the range gets much better you know thinking about how model s wasn't even around 10 years ago yeah and the wow. idea of getting a ev that could go 300 miles was Im almost impossible it was like crazy to imagine no matter the price point it was mm -hmm. almost impossible to imagine an ev go that wow. far so another nine years of energy density improvement and, and weight reductions, I could easily see the Tesla Semi with a payload going, you know, well over 600, 700 miles per charge. And that as the range improvements become more real, more and more brands buy into them to the point that by 2030, they're just like everywhere. There's like uh, electric semi trucks become as common as Model 3 and Y sightings. You know, you just drive by. Well, there's another one. There's another one. And they're silent. They don't make any noise, you know? It's just <laughs> rolling around quietly, and they're not <laughs> all the time. So that, to me, is like a big difference from how we see cars today versus how we'll see cars nine years from now is going to be like the big ones, especially pickups, too. Thinking about Cybertruck mass production for like years and years and years and them like flooding the streets in different cities. Oh, I can't wait. Drew, I'm worried about the Cybertruck. <gasps> hey, he I'm got sorry, it first. I'm sorry, Nick. 30 minutes worried. in. <sighs> he got it. Well, you are worried that, that it won't merch, be the best-selling so pickup we'll truck. Probably not the best-selling pickup truck, but I really think they need to get on the pull-through charger deal because mm. Mm. Agreed. they yeah, have not that's been... A, that's a good one. They haven't been doing anything with that. I haven't seen any new superchargers recently or any pictures of new superchargers that have pull through and mm -hmm. with i guess with x and y typically they can tow things they don't you don't really see people tow things too much but i've seen a couple and yeah. 
charging those at charge stations is not fun when you have a trailer. Yeah, they have the pull-in ones where you can kind of pull in, but then you're kind of taking up the aisle way for other EVs yeah. to get in and out. And so right. having a pull-through is smart, but I think the struggle is trying to find a location for where to put them. Like, do you put them in the middle of a Target uh, parking mm. lot? where, I don't know, people either take them over or something like that versus kind of what Tesla does right now in Target parking lots mm -hmm. where they go off to the back left the or the back right yeah. or whatever, away from everyone's hmm. usual parking spots kind of near the front of the store. I guess yeah. you can maybe put more in the middle of the aisleway on the far left of the parking lot, but I just don't see that much support from Tesla on those that want to have a electric vehicle but also tow. And mm -hmm. that's what really worries me with me and my wife because we like to tow and sure do all that. Um, and that's what we do with our truck right now. And if we're going to go for the cyber truck, we'd like that support, especially when mm -hmm. we're driving around up and down California or going to other states and not having that support. Not really a deal breaker, but just more of a big annoyance. Mm -hmm. So sure. I don't know. I hope they work on that. It would be nice. I, I it they, feels they, like it shouldn't be too complicated. They have some ultra wide ones though, right? I've seen a couple articles of some wider than usual Tesla stalls, which I think they makes did. a lot of sense because I've been with Randy and yeah, I guess I've even parked in in uh, in supercharging stalls and they get kind of crowded, especially in the Bay Area, as I'm sure Mike can attest mm -hmm. to. And uh, there isn't a ton of a ton of space to work around. And I'm used to driving a small car. Um, in mm -hmm. in you know normal sized areas, and I've also driven really big trucks before. So, to me, at yeah. least parking the Model Three in a standard supercharging location in the Bay Area felt a lot like me parking my huge pickup truck in like a normal shopping cart shopping lot. Like you, it felt very constricted, and like there's tons of things moving. And like by the way, this is an expensive car that I don't want to scrape. And oh, by the way, those are even more expensive cars next to me that I really don't want to scrape. And there's kind of that yeah. added pressure for me. Um, and so I would, I, I was really excited to see that they're making some wider, wider stalls. Now, obviously it kind of comes down to land footprint, right? If they could fit 10 stalls in that are wider instead of, you know, maybe 15 that in a densely populated area, that really does make a difference. Those extra five stalls. Um, but at least kind of, you know, on, on some of the big routes, like I know there's a out of Denver in Lyman, Colorado, there's a, a super charging station, which is kind of like the last stop before you hit like the middle of nowhere. Um, and that, that station has like, I think 12 or something superchargers. It's next to like a Wendy's. And so mm. they have tons of space. Like <laughs> they could like make those, but they're still like really small stalls. They don't have like yeah. the, the double, uh, you know, some parking spots have like the double, like kind of rectangular yep. lines where you have like some space between the cars instead of just lines. Right. I don't know. I feel like in some of the more, you know, cross country type spaces where there is that open space, they should have more, you know, space between the stalls, but that's additional wiring for them. The wires have to go longer to, you know, reach each supercharger, and there's a little bit more expense there on the land side as well. So I understand why they really haven't done it yet, but I, I am looking forward to the the day where Cybertruck is so ubiquitous that it makes sense to make all super supercharging stalls compatible with the Cybertruck. Because as far as I can tell, like, I wouldn't want to be pick parking a standard size Cybertruck in a supercharging lot right now in the bay area just from what i remember no. like, i remember thinking the model tough. 3 kind of like is a squish and once in san diego mm -hmm. uh randy was charging his tesla and like i had to like shimmy out of the car now obviously i can hardly get in and out of the model 3 so maybe that was part of it but i felt <laughs> like i could barely get in and out of the car because there was another car yeah. right next and randy wasn't mm -hmm. like parked weird or anything it was just like they're small spots so i'm worried about the right. cyber truck <laughs> You got I it think in. that, yeah, they definitely should design that moving forward with all new supercharging stations. If it's possible to retrofit old ones, that would be good. But, um, yeah, if especially with cross-country ones. Like, there's probably superchargers that are more commonly used for road trips, more so than just standard mm -hmm. driving around the city definitely. charging. They can probably tell just by the areas they're in versus, you know, the long string of chargers across the country. Those, I'd be like, prioritize those. Maybe make some pull-through stalls or some uh, wider uh, mm -hmm. parking spaces there. You could Because you, obviously changing all of them is going to be impossible. Yeah. Um, but all new ones, um, 
That's why I suggested uh, making at least some of cyber, some of the Cybertrucks compatible at Mega Chargers. Mm -hmm. If you're going to put in a bunch of those for the semi, um, you know they don't have to take full advantage of the one megawatt yes, speed do. or whatever. But <laughs> just a just a little connector on the opposite end of the truck. That's like okay, if if we're stopping semis here, then you can also stop cyber trucks here and it uses a different port so it's not like a model 3 could show up at the mega charger and be like hey, it's fun, yeah, thank you <laughs> but uh basically only put it on the tri motor or something mm. because that's probably the one people are buying for tows long long haul towing so you know that if a cyber truck's charging there it's probably because it has a big payload capacity and i really so love that semis idea. charge there i really cyber love that idea. There. i should ask this on the earnings call. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Should bring this up. Um, I personally think the Cybertruck will become the best-selling pickup by 2030. Okay. Hmm. I, agree, if you disagree, tell biased. me what you think will be the best-selling pickup by then. The Ford F-150! Yes, Bellard! It'll still be there? <laughs> uh, I think the Ford F-150 will still be there in a gas version in 2030. They'll probably be predominantly really? electric, but there will still be a gas version. Yeah, I would. But I would, will the gas version be the best seller? I would say, barring some governments saying, you know, you literally cannot sell a gas car in the year 2030. Barring that, I think there is I, a few states I know, doing that. Yeah. So barring that, I think <laughs> Ford will say you can, you know, still buy a gas F-150 because, like, I feel like the F-150 market. You know, I, I had had a friend who had an F-150 at one point, and he wanted that truck because... Actually, he has an F-250, now that I think about it. But anyway, like a Ford pickup truck. Like, More he wanted it. He, he wanted it for... <laughs> my friend, Sumner, we've had him on the show. He does not tow anything. I'm sorry, dude. You, 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 <laughs> you have a truck, truck for the truck reasons. Um, nice. Big. <laughs> big but, truck. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's kind of that... You want it, but you don't need it. And so Ford wants it, even though they don't need it. <laughs> so Ford's going to Ford's gonna want to be able to have that classic traditional truck, right? Like they, they want to say, hey, you can still use that truck that you love so much and that we love so much, even though it's not you know the best one. So yeah, 2030, I think, barring federal government saying you literally cannot sell a gas car in 2030, there will still be a But will it be car. the best seller? No. Oh, no, no. What will be the best-selling pickup, you think? An electric F-150 or will Cybertruck overtake that? The Nicola Badger. Yes, the Nicola Badger. They will sell 100% more units than they did last year. So many reservations. <laughs> I, so many. I'm glad that you actually uh, brought that up. There's a unofficial Cybertruck accessory that this company is selling. And you've seen renders oh, of it. That. It's some camper yeah. shell type of thing that mm, extends up where yes. it has a solar panel. Apparently, they've uh -huh. already garnered, I think, a thousand pre-orders, and it Five doesn't million really. Dollars. Yeah, which it, I think it charges for fifty thousand dollars for the pre-order, or whatever. Which, or at least that's what it's going to cost, yeah. is what they estimate. And it doesn't yeah, exist. How much is a reservation? I I did not look into it because I'm not interested. You said but I saw because if it's free, that's less impressive. I mean, maybe a hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, is, is it thought. refundable? I don't know. Probably, it's probably just like the Cybertruck. I'm guessing, but I don't know. I I saw the images of that. I it's five hundred dollar really deposit. Look... Five Wait, dollar deposit. Five hundred. Sorry, I missed a zero. Five thousand dollar deposit. Wow. Looking five million dollars in revenue on a thousand. Pre Was it too steep for many? Oh, you're right. It says right here, $5,000 deposit wasn't too steep for many of the future owners to throw down. What are y'all doing? <laughs> That's, <laughs> This wow. isn't made by Tesla, and it, they still, like, even if Tesla finally announces the dimensions, the company yeah. who's making this product doesn't know every single bit of the dimension of the bed, and they can't no, utilize all the all. space. And mm. so all this, they've done is come up with a concept rendering, essentially. Sounds like, like Nikola. <laughs> they, so actually, but Nicola was not five grand to reserve. I maybe so. I need to figure out how to use Blender, create some really great 3D renders, and call it Nicholas, and we'll have a whole company around <laughs> Nicholas selling renders to people for five million dollars. Because well, 
you bring up once again how much tremendous demand there is for the Cybertruck. Um, and I do think that the demand is only a fraction of what it will eventually be once they're actually out and driving mm -hmm. around. That'll that'll bring a whole new wave of people. But simply from the utility factor, and I think the design people will get used to it and, and get comfortable with it once it becomes a really commonplace thing and they become as common as Model 3s. By 2030, I don't see another electric pickup truck outselling it, to be honest with you. Mm. I, I I think there might be a few others that try to replicate it. I could see Ford or someone trying to uh, develop a more exoskeleton-style, you know, steel-based truck, but uh, it's not going to have the charging network, and it's not going to have the battery chemistry that Tesla does. Yep. So um, similar to Elon saying how he expects the Model Y to become the best-selling vehicle um, within the next couple of years. I think the Cybertruck, mainly because pickup truck sales are overly dominant in the U.S. Um, so you basically have to beat the F-150 to become the best seller. And I think they can eventually. Probably not uh, right away, not in the first couple of years of production. But by 2030, I could see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 10 years, or I guess 9 years. It's basically 9 years that competitors have to try to one up the Cybertruck. So mm -hmm. and kind of like you said the Model S didn't exist 10 years ago. So yeah. there is a whole bunch of potential for a competitor to come in. Um so I wouldn't really dismiss I wouldn't say that Cybertruck already has the title like it's basically got the trophy it just has to come into production it's got the trophy um of being the most popular and most sold uh electric truck in existence uh because there's a bunch of time but no i, I definitely mm -hmm. see both with demand products that aren't even tesla official like this weird camper <laughs> shell thing that's going for five thousand dollars on a pre-order geez um Ugh, that there is crazy people want this truck and so it makes sense that people are going to be waiting in line a long time kind of like physically with apple products in the past that it'll probably happen or at least high likelihood it in the words of elon it's not a zero percent or zero percent wow zero percent uh statistic it's very much mm. above that so i yeah. yeah i i personally would love to see how the competition is going to combat Cybertruck or try to one up it with something better because to me tesla is like the only type of company with the the guts to to make a vehicle so bizarre looking and so abstract and different that a lot of other brands would be so hesitant to even attempt well, to release something like that. Once once people catch on to the demand of the Cybertruck, I think right now, sorry, I wasn't centered there. I think right yeah. now, uh, people haven't quite figured out, at least on a mainstream level, and probably in the boardrooms of all, the, all these auto companies, they haven't quite figured out how much demand there's going to be for the Cybertruck, right? Like, there's there's an inkling no. of it back in November of 2019 when we started Talos of EV and the Talos of EV podcast, um, which you're listening to now, by the way. Um, I think... <gasps> yes! <laughs> I know, who would have thought? Um, I think that I just click on once this? people realize, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, they're selling 100,000 units of the Cybertruck in the second year of production or whatever. I'm just throwing out numbers. Um, and there's no stopping of demand. People are still, you know, I want a Cybertruck. I want a Cybertruck. I'll probably be in that group. And I think at some point, people are going to have to realize that uh, that is what the future looks like, right? We've been we've been playing around with this visual design of the future for years, since the 80s. Mm -hmm. That's been what the future was supposed to look like. And we're here. My mom always says, back when I was a kid, I always thought we'd be flying around in cars by the year 2000. And here we are, mm -hmm. driving around on wheels, still using gas power. Hopefully we're moving towards electric. But at the end of the day, the cars still pretty much look the same. Like, yeah, okay, they're a little bit different than they were in the 60s and 70s. But I think this is the future. And once people realize, once boardrooms across America realize, like, oh, my gosh, if Ford doesn't have a futuristic, like, not just like, oh, we're going to put a new facelift on and make it look, you know, cool. But, like, no, we're gonna ditch. We're gonna ditch everything we thought about a pickup truck and like build something from the ground up. I don't think Ford would do that because I know Ford. Um, but I, once <laughs> once these companies realize like, wow, there's a demand for hyper futuristic looking products. Like remember the i8, the BMW i8. 
I think it was what yeah, 2016 beautiful. or something when I was kind of popular. Enjoy the design language of that thing. Yeah, it everyone was like, "It's fantastic. so futuristic." Yeah, everyone was like, "It's so futuristic," and it was and for the time. It was still kind of it looks futuristic, but it's not even Cybertruck level of futuristic, right? It it still looks like what you'd expect a hypercar to look like, but sure. uh, it you know hypercar. It, lo- it I think that's what they're called. <laughs> Past the supercar is a hypercar. Um, I don't think that it was a that is car. A, past that, <laughs> past that is a ludicrous car, and after that, it goes plaid. So, what is a ludicrous <laughs> car then? Uh, any of the ludicrous mode Model S is the Nexus. I, I would call that a luxury sport. <laughs> luxury sport. <laughs> find my, find, break my funny joke. Why don't you? Re- okay, here we'll put Remock. <laughs> I, the, I uh, agree. The ludicrous mode. How about that? I do completely agree that Cybertruck will be copied eventually once the success becomes more obvious and like concrete. Once other brands start seeing how <laughs> many people buy it and order it, they're going to be like, oh, okay. So you can make something like that. You can do something really different. I cannot wait for the Ford ad that says once the Cybertruck's out for like a year, they're like, oh, it looks so ugly. Just like Samsung said, mm-hmm. or Google said, headphones, we got those. Headphone jacks, we got those. <laughs> Two cameras, no need. Two years later, no need. All Cybertruck cars. <laughs> They're just gonna be flip flopping so hard. It's gonna be funny to watch. I just expect it to be somewhat like the Mach E to the Model Y. You know, like they mm-hmm. they paint their own Ford version of it. Of like, well, we still want some traditional style. Dials. We still want buttons, dials, and we want paint on our version. But it's definitely strong. It's almost as strong as the Cybertruck, but it, it's so much better looking, and it'll probably borrow a lot of the F one hundred and fifty look, but just maybe tinker it to make it more futuristic. I, I don't see them doing a complete one hundred and eighty. Mm-hmm. I do see them doing like a ninety degree. Like <laughs> we're gonna go into a somewhat different direction to make the f-150 all electric and proud that it's all electric and kind of embrace that and make it look more rivian-esque in a way you know just kind of go in a more futuristic but not quite apocalypse level cyber truck otherwise it would just look like they're ripping them off like everyone's just and if and to I'm me the cyber trucks cyber trucks amazing It'd be fascinating i just don't see the ripoffs being able to match the range and performance in the the feature set that Tesla is going to have with the Cybertruck, and that's why I I could see a lot of people trying to catch up with it, but ultimately I think similar to the Model Y, overtaking everything and becoming the best seller, the Cybertruck will too, just because the cost benefits and the durability and it's already like taking the internet by storm, mm-hmm. and this is before the product's even out. I don't even recall the Model Three dominating so much conversation before it came out i know it was big but it didn't feel you know five thousand dollar reservation <laughs> accessory big it didn't feel this crazy yeah. and the amount of uh, hype um surrounding this one vehicle is like unmatched in my like i have not seen another even, even back to the delorean days, this much traffic like, i don't think there was this much yeah. traffic on like the delorean was an extremely popular vehicle after the movies right like Pretty yeah. much anyone who has you know been around in '80s pop culture knows what a DeLorean is, and that's that was I, I can't think of a more popular pop culturally you know designed you know, okay maybe the Porsche 911 is more timeless or the you know the Bentley whatever. I'd say, it is, you I'd know. say the Bronco maybe didn't yeah. really get too close, but it was definitely in yeah. that kind of playing yeah. field of would, people were that is Bronco, looking to yeah. see the new design, and you had a whole bunch of people mm-hmm. reporting on it saying, "Wow." They brought back the uh, brought back the Bronco, and it looks good. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, definitely Cybertruck. I think towers over all of that in terms of expectations and anticipation. Mm. Probably just from the versatility. I mean, there were like rappers using it in their music videos. Like, yeah. it, it, you know, it works with the with like the the that type of community. It works for the tesla community it works for people who have never bought a tesla and they're like that's going to be my first because it's so practical and um the affordability of it it's just it checks so many boxes so many different Mm -hmm. demographics it goes across opposed to just a handful um which is why i i feel like it's gonna take over basically the u.s market outside of the u.s i could still see model y of course being the best seller i think elon is pretty accurate with uh model y being the best by volume uh by revenue 
uh, next year, and then by 2023 by total shipments. Did you guys think that was crazy, or did it sound believable? I mean, I believed him initially, like, the unveiling night. He's like, hey, I think we'll probably sell a lot of Model Ys more than <laughs> S3 next. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. I get this product in April, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I think people will like this. I'm not, like, it's a pretty all-around good car. I mean, there's a little bit mm-hmm. of a learning curve on the screen, but... I think people will like it, and then now it's just blown up to where Model Y... I mean, they don't really split up the Model 3 and the Model Y on the uh, earnings report uh, statistics right. and analytics. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure a lot of that was Model Y. Mm-hmm. very heavy percentage was Model yeah. Y just blowing it out of the water. Um, and I guess that d- data is most likely supported by... At least my opinion is supported by the amount of model wise that i've seen around the bay and outside the bay as yeah. well i've seen a whole bunch outside the bay and it's intense um yeah definitely a bestseller globally every every other car i think i think i believed elon to begin with and i think they can do it but i really would rather them not right like i'd rather have them work on the <laughs> cyber truck like keep the keep the Model <laughs> Y production up in Fremont. Just leave it up there. It's doing fine. We need the Cyber Truck. Give me the Cyber Truck, Elon. It's I'd rather late, you Mike. not. I mean, it's too late, Nick. I don't like that it's too late. I'm still gonna complain about it. I want my Cyber Truck. There's there's still a giant paint shop they built into no! Giga Texas that they can't really. I want it. I want it to Giga Texas truck. to be the first car man. You complete zero you know, raw materials to output without a without a paint shop. I wanted that. But we I guess that's something that they you, were never going to build anything else there. That's probably something that you missed then, Nick. On the earnings report, it had all the pictures of all the updated, like what mm-hmm. they've been doing at the factories, and every single Giga Texas picture had the title of like Model Y blank. Like this is the Model Y Model paint Y shop. factory. This is the Model Y casting press. This is the Model Y. I don't care about the line. Model Y. I want the <laughs> Model Cybertruck. There's like maybe one or two occurrences of the word Cybertruck in the earnings report, if any. Like, I, I wonder why they're just sitting on this. Like, this is they're such... On it. I, I think well, they're just stuck in manufacturing... Or not manufacturing hell, but just trying to figure out design. Yeah. how... Well, no, they're done with design. It's now just trying to figure out how to get the design on paper to something mm-hmm. in reality that can be mass-produced. It's almost yeah. the same problem that they had with the Model 3, right? Because they made... A good amount of Model S's and X's, but they never made them on the scale mm. of Model Three, so it's kind of the same, but more of starting from square one. Of we have this truck, we have a design. How do we build it efficiently? Mm-hmm. And I think that's. I where think they're that's stuck. the. Yeah, they're. I don't know if they're stuck. They're just like in the middle of it, <laughs> and they're not gonna report anything until there's something interesting to report. Because I imagine. It's quite possible, I mean, last, not last week's earnings report, but, like, last quarter's earnings report, they said that the Cybertruck production design was, like, done. It's like, we're done tinkering. It's just ordering all the equipment and putting it together. So, I could be wrong, but my assumption is they have a plan now. Mm. Like, they have, in computer world, and in, in renders, <laughs> essentially, they have the, the math down on how the Cybertruck production line will work. It's all been planned out, and they all have the, you know, this is where the steel will go in, this is where the batteries will be installed, and here's how we fold it. I bet that has all been done, and it's just an execution process now, and their main focus is still just on 4680s and getting the yields for those mm-hmm. high, and the reason they don't say, any, say anything about the Cybertruck is because they know Model Y is still the priority, so they're going to mass-produce that. And Cybertruck is like when we can build the floor space for it, but all of our floor space at Giga Texas is just towards Model Y and 4680s right now. So they're they're probably like, we probably shouldn't talk about the Cybertruck much because deliveries might be a bit later than we originally said. Mm -hmm. They might not be until next year. So like right when he responded to that person who said... Cybertruck's expected to deliver end of this year? And he was like, Model Y later this year. <laughs> and later. more next year. I was like, ooh. He literally dodged that one very directly. <laughs> I mean, he could have just not responded. I wonder like, why he just didn't answer it. Like, yeah. Yeah, he just, yeah, there's he no responsibility to answer it. that tweet. Maybe he's just he, getting tired it, it of was people asking like a, about it. 
It was almost like a correction. That's how yeah. I interpreted uh -huh. it. Someone was like, Cybertruck coming? And he was like, Model Y coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. No. So, oh, so you're this might be a ways out. I don't want to say Cybertruck's delayed, but um, that's that's what I think is going to happen. But I, I think it will get there. It will get to mass production next year, and that's when it'll change everything. But how cheap do you think... EVs will be like decent EVs with like 200, 300 mile ranges by 2030. Uh, we're pretty Someone close right the now market. with the Bolt, right? It it goes like 240, I think, 250. And it's 32,000. Yeah. 250, 260 for a Bolt that yeah. is at 32,000. That's a pretty good deal. Um, but what about nine years from now? What do you think the prices will be? I think you get down to like 20,000. 20,000? 20, yeah. 20? I think I think That's most brands will have their cheapest EV at about twenty thousand dollars in nine years. Wow, they're they're bare bones. That sounds awesome. Like cheap, 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 cheap one. I think Tesla will be mm -hmm. first with the twenty thousand dollar one, probably in twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five, something like that, with the Model Two. It's been rumored maybe sooner. Who knows? Depends how fast. Well, they've said twenty five. I don't know if they'll get another five k off of that within the next five years, but yeah, I think they will. I could see them. I think yeah. they could get 25k Very starting price within the next. Very much a logarithmic curve, definitely not linear in right. terms of cutting right. down the cost. Yeah. It's all about optimization at this point in terms of yeah. how mm -hmm. to get That's this, fair. how to get EVs down that low but still provide enough range. Mm -hmm. And once you factor in cost of ownership, it's like a no-brainer. Imagining someone dropping 20k on a vehicle that they don't have to pay for gas or oil changes, like. I mean, some people probably think we're not going to be selling cars by then because robo taxis will do everything. Well, do you guys wrong. see that happening? Yeah, I've seen plenty of those people. I like. I want. <laughs> I want to believe it. I want to believe it. Like, I would love to. You know, not have to maintain a car. You know, that sounds amazing. But at the same, kind of where I'm at now. But, but at the same time, <laughs> there are just like so many edge cases that like I, I. It's. It would never work for me. I don't think my current lifestyle. Where I live out in the boonies, and sometimes yeah. I'm just like on a Saturday afternoon, I'm like, it's pretty outside, I'm done sitting in my office, I'm going to go on a drive. And I don't want to have to wait 30 minutes for a car to show up from town, and like, that wouldn't work for me. There are so many little edge cases that I don't think it'll ever work for everyone, but it could work for a good number of people. Like, there's already a service, Car2Go, I think, was is a big one in Denver, um, with... Yeah. You know, people who... That was in Portland when I went there. Okay, Portland. Yeah, it's probably in most of the big cities. But basically, you just it's an app where there are cars parked around the city, kind of like uh, one of those Lime scooters or whatever, just with a car. Yep. And so you just uh -huh. park it whenever you're done with it, and someone else finds it and uses it. Um, that That is probably... Those people would love a robo-taxi network. Like, it would be so much cheaper and all that fun stuff. But, like, yeah. I don't ever see myself living that lifestyle where, like, you're super urban, I guess. I don't know. I think Just stuff like Zooks on. here in San Francisco is a good idea for those high urban areas. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Very much like a couch style interior where you're, <laughs> you're, you got maybe four or five people in there sitting and it just slowly drives up and down the crazy roads that at least mm. San Francisco has. And being able yeah, to like take a people. Modern trolley, from, huh? Yeah, like a trolley. Exactly. It looks like a trolley. Uh, I think that's what's. <laughs> yeah pretty funny with zooks yeah. is their design language i don't know whether it's intentional or not but it looks like a mini trolley and i think mm. if they get to that point where you've got mini trolleys everywhere who needs a car it's like virtual rails yeah as long as it doesn't deviate from the rails <laughs> True. right it's got a basic uh and don't hit that don't hit that but then here are these virtual rails that it stays on and doesn't leave do you think do you think people will be in ten years? Well, we're talking about nine years from now. Possibly this isn't super EV related, but we can make it be if we try. Do you think people will live in cities more than they do now, or less in in ten years? I think that's the trouble with the time that we're recording this right now. Because in a COVID world, it makes sense. You don't have to live in a city. You can work from home. You can work anywhere. You can work in the middle of Utah and still work for the startup company in the middle of Silicon Valley or Austin mm -hmm. or yeah, something like that. It's true. But coming out of the coronavirus type of situation, um, I don't know because there could be that move to working from home a lot more 
and you don't really have too many people in the office usually and all these big buildings that you see around are pretty empty or not maybe we go back to what yeah. we had before <laughs> a little bit more normalcy but I don't know I'd hmm. say maybe 60% I'd say yeah I think people will return back to high so, urban areas so in, in nine years you'd say there's a 60% chance that, w that there will be more people living in cities than there are now oh no, <laughs> I think it's a guarantee because of just populations increasing over time. Okay, yeah, I was going to say. I, I meant There's multiple wise. ways to answer I, I'm sorry, that. I meant percentage-wise, yeah. yeah, not like hit counts. But yeah, yeah, sorry. I think like, there's I don't a know what the stats are right that... now, but I'm sure like 55% of the U.S. would live in what's de declared as a city, I guess. I don't I don't know that stat off the top of my head, but it feels about right. You know, about half the, a little bit more than half the people live in a city, and, you know, the rest of us don't. Um, I guess to make it short yeah. but simple and sweet, yeah. Yes. I think okay, there will cool. be more yes. people in cities. Right. So in that case, there's a good <laughs> chance for RoboTaxi. Yes. I think there's a big market for RoboTaxi regardless, even if you had the software now. But I, I, I'll i bump up a little bit and say that I do think there might be a tad more of a movement, especially with Starlink um, bringing faster internet to more places that are not limited to. Like, one of the main reasons I moved out at first when I was young was for internet yep. I literally moved my whole business and my lifestyle because I needed a faster internet connection and with services like Starlink changing that and so much work being done online now I do think there might be a bit more with um, real estate prices getting higher and higher even where I live I don't mm -hmm. even live in a major area and I'm looking at the real estate market going what the heck is going on why are the values of everything this junk just going on Zillow the other day it's just junk that's insanely expensive and I'm like why does this cost so much and I think that in the age of the internet there's so many people trying to be more fire you know mm -hmm. passive income buy up their houses buy up the and I think there's a lot of laws now that are going to prevent another housing crash like 2008 from happening that are banks with different requirements for mortgages and stuff I, there could be blips I mean, but Something as major JP as the Morgan Chase crash. is literally having CDO sales right now. So, <laughs> yeah, but I, I just don't think it'll be as major. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I I wouldn't think say the, it'll be the a housing market that'll crash the economy next time. It'll be something else, I'm sure. Guys, like I'm worried about, about canoe. Yeah, I'm sorry. We got <laughs> off about EVs. Canoe. We're just talking. No, about let canoes. me finish my thought. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> my thought process was. Um, that the the real estate in cities is very very high as is yep. and i think it'll continue to get higher and higher and higher and as there's more population growth that's not going to change and that will push people to move out of major cities into cheaper uh cost of living areas that they can work from home in and i think more businesses will be built around that in the mm -hmm. future um, but there will still absolutely be a huge market for robo taxis and cars that people that don't need to own cars it already kind of exists there's people yeah. that uber and taxi everywhere regardless it's just making a cheaper option for them but people who already own their cars and maintain their cars and keep them for eight ten years i don't see them giving up car ownership even if robo taxi was a thing just because of how convenient it is to be like this is my car i like it this way i want this performance i i gotta have this car seat for my kid i gotta have this truck for my trailer and it latches up with this ball joint you know there's too much like possessiveness mm -hmm. to our vehicles then it's it's so much more than just i need to get to work it's yep. it's like way more what than color is it what i want to go get do food. i have on my car Oh yeah, there's so much individuality behind car ownership that I don't I don't think it'll kill it off. But there seems to be a lot of people in the Tesla verse that are convinced Tesla won't be selling cars in nine years and they'll just be all in on ride hailing services everywhere. But I feel like those people are living in densely populated areas, just mm -hmm. kind of thinking that's what most of the world is, right? We're all just trying to get down to Chipotle and get back home, and that's yeah. what we're driving around for, right? I, I, in the rural areas, especially the ones out where I live, I'm like, that would never work. <laughs> it's impossible. So many edge cases, too. That's that's yeah. what um, Tesla's made tremendous progress in autonomy, but almost no progress in liability hmm. when it comes to what, what you can when... do in the vehicle without paying attention. Hmm. Essentially, they haven't changed at all since the first version of Autopilot. It's pretty much still pay attention don't go to sleep 
don't look away from the road. Still be ready to take over, but here's some lane keep stuff. Even with the FSD beta in version 9 that's supposed to come out in the next couple weeks, for the next three months, he's going to say, <laughs> next couple weeks. One year later. It gets... If you define uh, couple as so being annoying. less it's than like, 1,000, then yes, it will be in the next couple <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I do agree with Chris. They need to stop with the timelines, in my opinion. Totally. They just need to say, like, we're working on it, we're trying, but stop telling people it's a couple weeks away because it's not helping. It's just everybody's like, oh, okay, here we go again. We're excited. Gives us but, something to talk like, about, though. It does, but I'm frustrated. <laughs> I don't like it. Even with version 9, as capable as it may be, they haven't gotten to the point yet where they're like, okay, look away. You mm -hmm. don't need to look. And yeah. that's what I could see taking a long, long time. The car dr doing the whole drive, but I still got to pay attention. That Yeah, that's probably around the corner. I could see that next year. But I mean, that's what I do right now, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much of your drive do you think is done by you versus the car? Uh, oh, goodness. Probably 60-40. Or, sorry, 40-60. Um, mm. forty percent of the time happen, I might be driving, and sixty percent of the time the car is driving. Uh, it all kind of just depends on what's going on, but I think that mm -hmm. is steadily increasing to a thirty seventy split of me mm. kind of navigating like the small intricacies around some of the highways yeah. or some of the interchanges. Um, but a lot of the highway driving that I do, I don't drive it anymore. The car drives. Mm. I mm. just sit there and look at all the. Uh, the Lucid Airs passing by all the 2021 Model S's and X's that I've seen recently. Yeah, you saw Lucid, didn't you? I see Lucid's week. all the time now. It's it's getting annoying. It's like, okay, I've now seen the Dream Edition probably <laughs> seven times on the road. Jeez. Like, wow. please wow. sell this vehicle. I saw two 2021 <laughs> Model X's last wow. week. Wow. Um, one was red, one was white. Uh, Did they have a yoke or wait, a steering wheel? X's or S's? X's. Whoa. Yeah. Those are really back ordered. Without the grill. Um, yeah, I think a lot of these are Tesla vehicles. <laughs> when you said without the grill, <laughs> I imagined or, a Tesla without the front part. Sorry. I just not, like the bumper, okay, the, gill. the metal hanging gill, out. Yeah. You're just like, let me, got let me preface. Without the grill. On, if you're wondering what I'm saying, if you look at a previously made Model X and you look at kind of like the side air intakes... It almost looks like gills mm -hmm. because of the structural mm -hmm. bits that they've got right there to direct flow. Um, they have eliminated that in the 2021, and mm. that's how I usually figure out whether it's an old X or a new X. And you can do the same with the Model S. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you see a chrome-deleted Model S and X, you'll think, oh, it's a 2021. But then if you look at the grill or the gills, is what I call them, down there, and they're there, then it's just someone who blacked out their vehicle. So... Hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of chrome deletes there's a lot on S's and X's already. So the gills is something I don't see many people do modify. <laughs> I'm going to take the little gills out of the air intake. I don't see that as often. So that's probably the best way to detect one, looking at the front. Mm -hmm. It's a subtle thing, but it's it's pretty um, universal. Like there's not really a way to someone with that. I don't even think you can remove those on the old SNX. I mean, unless you're doing something kind of like with the body kit transformations that you see a lot with Model 3s. Yeah. Or I've yeah. seen a few with Model S's. You could do the same with the Model mm -hmm. X and S, but usually, typically people aren't doing that. And At least where I'm at, that might be more detectable, or at least more... It's a higher statistic of me seeing it because there's just more people and mm -hmm. more money. But, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I've seen a bunch mm. of those um, on the, That's cool. the drives to work where I don't have to really pay too much attention in keeping in the lane because the car does that and managing the speed. You've got a perfect drive. You can <laughs> you see do. all these prototypes. You're seeing Rivians and Apple Lucids. And, like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> every day to work, you're like, hmm, what will I locate today? <laughs> I mean, I don't see Apple Park every day. I drive okay. by it and maybe... I mean, it's a. It's not a huge building. It's very low to the ground. Mm -hmm. Low to the ground. Uh, yeah. It is, yeah. So you can't really see it. But yeah, I've seen one Rivian and that was nice. Sadly, we did not see one when Drew was here. We saw the Rivian... Where, or not warehouses, but offices. But that was it. <laughs> hmm. 
I really wanted to see a Rivian. It's too bad we couldn't spot one because it was like a couple days later the kilowatts spotted some like not far from where we were looking. I mean, I think it's because we were looking on a Saturday and people don't usually work on Saturdays unless you work at Tesla. If you work at Tesla, then you're working on a Saturday. But if you work at Tesla, you're always working. Personal life? What's that? (laughs) Make the Cybertruck. Hurry up. (laughs) Get back to work. Right. What are you doing? Make the Cybertruck. Mike hasn't spotted a Cybertruck yet. Yet. To be fair. Yet being the key word of this sentence. I tried looking for one on Battery Day. Um, I drove by to see if I could spot it. Oh, that's right. And did not see it. So that was... Just heard a bunch of honking. No, I mean, I I went later (laughs) in the day when I thought, okay, they're probably driving the Cybertruck to Fremont Factory from... Cato Road. Oh. In which that's a short wow. drive. I really thought about this. Mm. Well, I yeah. thought it was, I also worked that day. So it was when I got off, I'm like, okay, I'll drive over there. It's a bit out of the mm-hmm. way from my house, but not too bad. I'm like, okay, let's try to find it in. Nope. Still haven't seen one visually, which is a, or not visually, in, in person, I guess. But I think that'll change soon. I think we'll see a lot more. It'll be like the Model Y sightings. Um, mm. I think we'll see. The pilot production. The pilot production happening with. A bunch of them with different rims, hopefully. I, I, I kind of disagree with you, Ooh. Drew, on the whole rim and accessory and options for the Cybertruck. I think there'll be... <laughs> yeah. I think there'll be a bit. Um, kind of thumbing through Ford and Chevy's configurations for trucks and then thumbing through Tesla's. I think there's potential for some packages yeah. that you can include on the configuration page that m- could also double as their Tesla shop stuff that you can buy after the fact of mm-hmm. purchasing the vehicle. But hmm. I well, think there'll be more rims. Tesla does like to do stuff like other automakers. That's true. In a yes, way, yeah. They're known. They're famously known <laughs> for copying every other auto manufacturer and doing things exactly the same way. I'd say in a way, yeah. <laughs> they can't deviate too much to where they're I mean, making like an iPhone on wheels. Yet, that's, yet, Mike. I would say I would, the Model Three is pretty dang close to what an iPhone on wheels would be. <laughs> agreed. <laughs> Gotta beat Apple to the punch on that one. If Apple made a car. It would be a model. I three. doubt it would be that different. <laughs> It'd be pretty much fancy. It, well, Apple would probably make more of an S. But yeah, going all in on a screen and not letting you work on it and saying you don't need this, you don't need this. That's that's whole Tesla's. That how can we get rid of radar? How can we get rid of mirrors? How can we get rid of the? I I just see Tesla doing the most like utmost simplified mass production of Cybertruck possible. That's why I'm anticipating like. Well, if I remember correctly, after the Model Y unveiling, the configurator had different rim options, right? Different paint options, and it was. I think it did. Out. Yeah, I, I, after the after it was unveiled, you could pre-order uh, different trims. Yeah, there were different customizations white, for the tires white, and stuff. Uh, yeah, twenty-two inch wheel or twenty inch wheel, whatever the bigger one was. Ordered. After the unveiling for the Model Y, directly afterward, like. The day afterward, you could only get the Model 3 rims with uh, the, the usual, arrow wheels, the, yeah. The usual Model 3 colors. Um, no, mm-hmm. you could do the bigger white performance wheels. Oh, maybe that was on the performance model that I had pre ordered or reserved or whatever. Because it Model was. Y? For Model <laughs> Y, he was, oh, reserved one of each. For Model Y, it was all <laughs> Model 3 rims up until January when they. Did yes. the big whole change up? Gemini. On. Then they gave it Gemini. Okay, wheels. Yeah, Gemini. Yeah. I'm sorry. Turbine. Yeah. Model Three performance wheels. There's that white. It looks like the fan blade one, but it's white, and you can see the red brakes through it. What's that wheel called? Mm-hmm. That the performance sport wheel? wheels. Sport wheels. Sport. Yeah. I think they're just called that sport was an wheels on the model. Yeah. Why? At launch. Mm-hmm. But to me, the fact that they unveiled that and have some different tire options showcasing, and yet they've unveiled the Cybertruck and didn't really let you customize what tires or anything it was like fsd or no fsd it was like the biggest question to check out i i'm guessing i could be wrong i mean i'm I'm not against having more tire options and it's just a prediction thing but i'm i'm predicting they're gonna make it like one size fits all these are the tires you get and Maybe there's some in the accessory page afterwards, but that configurator basically feeds directly to their factories. Like, the factories are figuring out how much demand there is for each model, which is why I think that they sell a lot of stuff in the accessories page, not in the configurator, just because they're like, well, we're going to pump out this, and if people want to buy something else, they can buy something else. But we're going to mainly, off the assembly line, want to make sure 
each one of these vehicles has. They're not going to want to worry about the camping kit or different tires during the checkout like manufacturing process. They're just going to be like, well, if you want it different, you're going to have to mix it up yourself, but not on our end. But they could go either way. I could see that. I don't know for sure. But I mean, I'd kind of point towards Rivian and their configuration page, but yeah, tesla it a little bit more, right? Because on Rivian's, you've got like, I think, five or six different wheel choices. Oh, yeah. That Rivian's got tons of tears. Yeah. And so I could probably see that Nicola maybe coming to the Tesla shop. <laughs> and I, yeah, I just, I don't see, Rivian, I feel like, has a bunch of customization options because they're for one higher price truck and also this is like their first vehicle and, and they got amazon behind them they got amazon behind them but the the battery supplies is the main drawback for rivian and all their delivery van obligations and they're, they're kind of trying to win people over their first vehicle so they want to make sure you really get the one exactly the way you like it tesla's like we can afford to lose 80% of our Cybertruck fan base and we'll still be fine. Mm-hmm. We're not really going to prioritize this. We don't care if it's late. We don't care if it doesn't have the right trim option for you. It's just like, you'll take what we give you and you will like it. And you will accept the terms of our... <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I, I, it's like they're handling their marketing department right now. Like Rivian's getting all this love in the press, and Jeff Bezos is driving it around in the desert and Blue Origin, the and big feather Rivian's on the side. going cross continental road trips, and everyone's like, "Wow, look at the Rivian road testing!" And the Cybertruck's like, "Not ready yet." <laughs> I we'll go to factory know. once. Literally, literally goes <laughs> to factory <laughs> once, destroys the internet. <laughs> And the last sighting before that factory was the Peterson Museum, right? Mm-hmm. Mm, no, it came to Fremont Factory, I think. Oh, yeah. And people Someone took a picture of it on yeah. the, next to the assembly oh. line of Model Ys mm-hmm. or 3s. I'm guessing that wasn't intentional. Was know. that just like they needed a place to park it for the weekend? <laughs> we're like moving. They were painting the R&D room. <laughs> they had to move it somewhere. I don't know. I think Peter Mer- Peterson but. Museum was... After, no, before Battery Day, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Peterson yeah. Museum was like in May, June? It was about a year ago? I think so, right? Wow. Yeah, that sounds right. It was early it's been summer. a year since like, Randy's touched a Cybertruck. It's been an eternity <laughs> since I've touched a Cybertruck. <laughs> Literal eternity. I know. Far too long. It's approached Far zero. <laughs> I can't wait to touch a Cybertruck. <laughs> approaches zero. <laughs> Me too. I can't wait just to look at one, even if I don't get to touch it. I just want to see it. But I want to look. It's it. funny to me. There's a lot of comments on my Rivian videos and stuff that, of people that are convinced the Cybertruck is just for crazy Tesla fanboys. Like they keep saying, "I laughed so hard when you said that Cybertruck would outsell the Rivian." I was like, "I'm laughing so hard." You're reading laughing this comment. that. You're laughing hard that a cheaper, more durable, larger, with bigger range, bigger charge network vehicle is going to outsell, better towing vehicle is going to outsell a more expensive, less durable, smaller pickup with more battery supply constraints. I don't honestly see, even if the prices were equal, how you would imagine. I guess the Rivian comes out first. I'll give it that. But just in regards to the price points and the range and the sheer amount of internet traffic the Cybertruck drove compared to a Rivian is like I I asked people at my last like you know had a bit of a gathering when we went to last Easter and I was like talking to my cousin and he knew about the Cybertruck you know and he's Ooh. not really a truck person or an EV person I was just like have you heard of the Cybertruck and he was like yeah I kind of like that design <laughs> and I bet if you went up to people and were like have you heard of Rivian they'd be like what <laughs> the what Oh, it was on that one long way up show on Apple TV Plus. Of course, <laughs> you know, like yes, people know my favorite well. show. Oh, wait. <laughs> Everyone watches that. Yeah, I, I, I love the Rivian, and I do think it has a market. I do think they'll do well. I just, I see no future where that outsells the Cybertruck. It just doesn't make sense. Mm. It's like a different market entirely, just from totally. the size. Yeah, I'm the worried about the Cybertruck, and I'm not worried about the Rivian. I'm not worried about. I'm worried about Rivian maybe in the long term, but in the short term, I think they might have their ducks in a row right now in terms of 
yeah. partners. They seem solid. And, they yeah. got the insurance. Yeah. Wow. What is that, 40 states mm-hmm. they cover? They mm-hmm. said, yeah, 40 states, which is huge. That's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> they're covering, they're, they're giving people like specialists as they're nearing deliveries. Deliveries are next month, people. Yeah. To give you some that's perspective. Cool. Yeah. The first Rivians uh, outside of the vans, those don't count. I hate those delivery vans because all the headlines say Rivian deliveries. And then you're <laughs> like, in, in Colorado. It's it like, is coming oh, to Colorado. Delivery. Yeah. Yep. From the van. <laughs> Are they just doing like one van at a time in all these cities? Yes. To gather all the data that they need, they put one van in each city or each state. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Because I've never seen like two of them next to each other, but they're always like, delivery van is now here. And it was like, is it the same one? They just keep moving it? They just keep moving it. It's like, oh, now yeah, it's they're in a, the bay. Now they're in it's San been a Diego. While now they've seen the Rivian van in LA. I hope it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's in Vegas. Living it up. <laughs> it's just living it up. Oh, well. Do we have closing thoughts, gents, or any other subjects you wanted to go into? Yeah, actually, a pretty big one. Um, we haven't talked about the Cybertruck yet this episode, so uh, we need to... Oh, right. Yeah. That thing. I forgot about that. talk about that a little bit more. It doesn't get enough it's love. Like the on only the other thing on my mind was, did you guys catch the Model X back orders? Push back to the fourth quarter. No, Oof. I didn't. That's if you order a Model X today, the website says you won't get it until October or November. Wow. I guess I better did Dirty Tesla order his Model it... X already? He did. His okay. his order page still says June. Good, good, good. So I'm, I believe it's for new orders, but it gives wow. you perspective on how many people have ordered one. Jeez. Hey, if, if, if I had 90000 to burn, burn right now and... You know, the Cybertruck was a year away, and I just had 90000 to either burn in a big pile of fire or buy something with. I'd probably get a Model X. So, Wow. That's commitment. I don't think I'd ever yeah. get a Model well X. Done. I love my ever? wife. I don't think I'd ever get an X unless I had a oh. billion dollars. Then, yeah, sure. Exactly. That's what I mean. I, I, if I, if, if unless, price was a factor in any of this, dollars. if a factor was... If 500 price, million, though. Mm. I'd still stay mm. with a Y. Okay. <laughs> yeah, affordability. Right. Affordability. What if, uh, if so? If your Y got into an accident, heaven forbid, and you had to replace it, you'd get the exact same vehicle. So that again, that is hilarious because I I brought that up to the wife, I think last week. That exact question. Uh-huh. I'm like, what happens? I'm not saying I'm gonna crash it intentionally, <laughs> but let's just say I'm driving to <laughs> an intersection. Reasons, this is a hypothetical. <laughs> I'm driving uh-huh. through an intersection and some Ford F-150 totally just destroys the back of it, um, obliterates it. I get all my money back on it. I asked her, "Do you would you, would you be comfortable with either just staying with this very same vehicle, like uh, the Sport Rims, Midnight Silver Metallic, with full self-driving?" I plugged it in. It's fifty-three thousand five hundred for the purchase price. Basically, my same configuration. Yeah, with full same rims, same color. Oh, with full self driving, it's sixty three thousand five hundred. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so I quoted either that or we shell out somehow twenty thousand more dollars and possibly get a Model S long range. And she Ooh, basically that- stared at me and laughed. She's like, right. "Why are why are we getting a Model S? What about the Cybertruck?" Uh-huh. I thought you were going to exactly get a Exactly what truck. she said. That's what her answer was shortly after. She said, what about my Cybertruck? I like, have a yeah, s- right. I have a sad feeling the Cybertruck's further away than we think. <laughs> yeah. I, you think it's going to be I like too am worried. I think it could be summer, potentially third quarter, if 4680s don't ramp it. The comment at the last earnings call about 12 to 18 months away from volume production was not encouraging to me when i heard them say 12 18 months i was like "Ooh, yeah. from now it's already it's quarter two of 2020 it's a very awkward transition so that, from uh or two i guess the 4680 uh-huh. sells yeah it's just gonna be a big headache for tesla in terms of trying to get products out with mm-hmm. like you said the texas made model y the berlin made model y and mm-hmm. everything else after that with semis and oh yeah there's a bunch of stuff cyber trucks Oi. i'm uh, yeah i guess in the words of nick since he is no longer with us 
I'm <laughs> I'm worried about the Cybertruck. Again. <laughs> but if you were in an accident, you'd get the same vehicle. Why? Yeah, sorry. I guess we deviated from that. Yeah. Uh, according <laughs> to the wife, because the wife yes. is the one who also drives these For vehicles sure. as well. It's not just me driving the, the Y and the For Ram. sure. We would probably go for the Model Y again, Midnight Silver Metallic. Mm -hmm. I, I could try to make a case for going for red, maybe. The red seems like a pretty Ooh. fun color to change it up with. I don't think she would... Yeah. I don't know if she'd be happy with that. She had a red car before, and she liked it. So yeah. I could maybe swear okay. on that. But otherwise... You could mix it up a bit. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. It's only but a grand more. I like the black Y, too. It's like all blacked out. I love all seeing trim. it on the, on the road. I was going to say on the rims. It's the same price. <laughs> on the rims. On the anyway. rims. All right. Well, I appreciate you for coming on. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for, for coming <laughs> on. Oh, my goodness. You Nick goodness. just destroyed everything. I destroyed everything. Thanks for coming on, Nick. Hey, I appreciate you making time me. to join Thanks me and Drew on the Tales of EV podcast that we started together. Mm. <laughs> and as always, we hope Model S deliveries start within the next week. <laughs> Take care. Bye. <laughs> Take care. Oh my goodness. Mike keeps hitting himself. Stop hitting yourself. You need to be Mike. nice to my friend Mike here, okay? <laughs> Stop mic dropping. That's abuse. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>